Hey FishTube, Steven here. Now, over the years of keeping fish, I've learned a lot through a combination of advice from my favorite fish tubers and just hands-on experience. But I gotta admit, when it comes to treating a sick fish, I'm always second-guessing myself. Yeah, when there's ick, I've had 100% success, really, uh, treating with ickx. Same with most other parasite issues, but what about all the other countless things that can go wrong with fish health? Like, how do I know if it's a virus or a bacteria? And if it's a bacteria, is it gram positive or gram negative? When do I go for those aggressive meds or, you know, just add some salt and do some extra water changes? And all of the options in between. So I wanted to hear from some other folks. And again, I think it's important to get perspectives from a variety of fish keepers, the hobbyists like me, and then the business owners who have to treat a lot of imported fish and the specialists who have to consider how the typical medications might affect sensitive creatures like snails. My question was simple. What fish medications or other remedies do you always keep on hand? So listen, learn, and keep learning. What fish medications and other remedies do you always make sure you have on hand? So there are a few that I use frequently. Um, the safer ones, let's say, wear gloves, wear eye protection, wear a mask. You don't want to get these things on your skin. You don't want to breathe this stuff. Like, be careful with your medicines would be my advice. But Ickex is a great one or Mardell Quick Cure, something that's a formulin and malachite green based. Um, Treatment is great for ick and lots of external protozoans. It, it takes care of lots of things. So that's a good one to have on hand. Metronidazole and Praziquantol, good to have on hand. Levamisol for worms. Um, and then when it comes to antibiotics, I generally have canamycin and nitrofurazone on hand. I do want to caution people if you're going to do medication, it's best to have a hospital tank. Medications can have unknown ramifications or unexpected ramifications on the fish and the environment they live in. They can kill your cycle, they can kill all the microorganisms in the tank so then you get an ammonia spike from the decay, they can kill plants, so there's lots of things. So it's best if you have a separate hospital tank, especially for antibiotics like canamycin and nitrofurazone. But we also do salt. Um, we do use salt quite a bit to maintain fish health here. And then the last one we have on hand is copper, a chelated copper. I think we're using copper safe right now, Fritz Mardell copper safe. Um, it's the only thing we've found, in, found, we found in combination with a salt dip to really take care of velvet. I hate velvet. It's a frequent customer here because we have very soft water. And so um, we have to have salt and copper on hand because we generally have a tank or two every month that ends up coming down with velvet that we have to treat because our water is soft. I'm an old school guy. I tend to use more salt and heat than anything else I use. However, I always make sure I have ickx in the house and I also make sure that we have API fungus cure in the house at all times. Uh, those two along with salt, I, I usually have all the bases covered. Occasionally, if we get a parasite, then there's other things I would use, but those are the three main things I make sure my fish room has at all times. That would be salt, ickx, and API uh, fungus cure. Those are the three things I would always have. Fish medications is one thing that I always take serious. I don't keep a lot of stuff on hand. I always keep general cure on hand and, uh, and ick like some form of ickx or some type of ick remover but uh generally the only thing that i make sure that i always have is uh aquarium salt i like to use the aquarium salt whenever i can in a hospital tank before i start using dosing with real drugs so i guess that's aquarium salt's my number one go-to well, considering that we do keep so many mystery snails on hand in our fish compound, um, if a problem breaks out, we do need to separate the fish and the snails because snails do not tolerate any type of treatment, medication, heat, or salt at all. As far as the fish goes, we will treat with heat and salt first course, 
if need be we also keep on hand the um, general cure ICX and erythromycin and of course the tried and true Melifix because you know cichlids so you never know when you the, uh, any issues may pop up that you need those as far as for snails the best treatment is an air bath have you ever heard of an air bath if not let me show you I need a bowl a tea towel some tank water and of course your snail Dip your tea towel in some tank water and then make a little nest in the bowl to contain your snail. Make sure it's in a secure location so that it cannot escape. Make sure that your towel is nice and wet to keep the snail hydrated while you give it its air bath. Then add your snail. Make sure it's opposite whirl side down. So flat side down, it's easiest to open that way. And also, make sure to keep your snail well hydrated during this process. Now this process should not last any longer than 10 to 15 minutes. So make sure to watch your snail and keep it hydrated through this whole time. He's just too cute. When the time is up, gently release your snail from the towel, be careful, and place him back in the aquarium. And if you may be experiencing any other kind of snaily issues and you just can't figure it out, please feel free to message me over at Foxy's Fishes and I will do my best to help you save your snail. Be well, showmates. So as far as medications go, I've treated a fair, fair amount of fish in 10 plus years at fish stores and that kind of stuff, and I've tried lots of different things. I've got basically four things that I always try to have on hand, with one being the most important. And the most important one would be aquarium salt. Uh, whether you buy it from, you know, like a hardware store as rock salt, or you're buying it in a better form like a, a Fritz Aquatic Salt. You know, not a, not a marine salt, but an actual aquarium salt that's just salt. That treats everything pretty much external. External parasites, bacteria, funguses, all of that. It's a wide spectrum medicine as I call it. Uh, so that's that's the one I always have on hand because it, it can be harsh on some but it also will will cure a lot. Uh, the other three you know they fall into my trio and I don't want this to be a uh, you know an advertisement for that but the, the three things that I always have I always want to have an antibiotic on hand I want to have anti external parasites on hand and I want to have internal uh, parasite medication on hand. So for me personally what I use is I use uh, Maricin by Fritz, that's an antibiotic. I use uh, ICX by Hikari or Aquarium Solutions. Uh, that's just the best ick treatment I've ever found and I'm sure there's other that works, but this one always works for me. And then again, Fritz uh, Paracleanse, which is the internal tapeworms. And that's, that's one I think a lot of people neglect because it doesn't kill your fish quickly. It kills them over years of losing weight and malnutrition and basically you've got worms in the gut that slowly uh, wear down the immune system of fish and so I feel like that's a one that most people should be using uh, but between those four you know the salt and those three meds I can cure most things there's still 10% out there that need specialized medication uh, but that's way beyond the scope of you know what will handle most things and th those four things I always have at every location and uh, we use them every day honestly I mean maybe not every day here but uh, even even last week I used some antibiotic to cure uh, cyanobacteria, so other uses as well. What's cracking, YouTube? It's me, the Biz, Fishy Biz Quadrants, Professional Quadrants with the Amateur Test Amateurs, yup! Stephen P. wants to know, what remedies do you have on hand for your fish tanks? Well, it's a great question. Um, I always keep some Melafix, M-E-L-A-F-I-X, um, also some Primafix, P-R-I-M-A, fix and I also have aquarium salt on hand um, Epsom salt on hand um, and I need to have erythromycin I believe is the other 
general cure I think API makes it um, but I don't have any of that but mostly it's the Prima fix and Mila fix because um, they supposed to generally yeah, take care of anything that your fish may be going through including like fish bloat or ick or um, something like that and actually with ick I just drive the temperature up and use um, Epsom and our aquarium salt for about a week a week of a couple of days or something like that so um, those are the ones that I have but I'm sure there are some more but um, I usually don't have too many problems and knock on wood that you really don't but uh, usually those are the ones that I, I technically use I'm out Hey everybody, this is Alexander Williamson with The Secret History Living in Your Aquarium. So, what do I do to keep my fish healthy? What sort of medicines do I give them? Crickets. No, really, I give them live food and I keep them healthy. I give them tannins. I give them mealworms and white worms and planaria and infusoria and any other little creepy crawly that tends to be a pest or live in tanks. That's something that I tend to make sure I have a fish that is willing to eat somewhere in my tanks. I make sure that I select fish from a good source and that they're healthy and happy in the first place. That will save you so much grief later. But when I do have to actually get out the medicine, there are only a few things I actually use. I mean, doing some research and learning that, hey, maybe I shouldn't clean all the algae in all my tanks, uh, can go a long way. A lot of fish, a lot of shrimp, depend on this just to survive. Others don't, they need higher protein meals. But knowing these things, knowing how to keep their slime coats healthy, uh, by keeping the water slightly acidic and using tannins, uh, feeding them carotenoids, anthocyanins, and other things like omega-3s and omega-6s, all that can be done naturally. You don't need chemicals for it. There are only a very few instances and a few diseases that you actually need chemicals. The rest, including these incredible colors, can be achieved completely naturally. So let me tell you about the things I do use when I have to go nuclear. All right, the first one, it's already still natural. It is betel nut extract. This stuff is strong. It will kill any planaria. It will kill shrimp sometimes, and it will kill other fish and snails if you overdose. However, in low doses, it'll be fine with shrimp, and it is incredible. It's from Japan, it's a little pricey, it'll last you forever, and your planaria will never come back, your hydras will never come back, if you have them in your tank and you put a few scoops of this in. It's incredible. All right, next we have erythromycin. Uh, any gram-positive bac uh, bacteria fighting antibiotic is actually fine. This is for exterior wounds or very, very bad infections that look terrible and are seeping when the biofilm on the fish has uh, fallen away and it's an open wound that is open to oxygen. This will treat that. This will also kill all that blue-green algae that lives in your tank very quickly. Then we have a gram-negative treating uh, medication that also treats parasites. And this is metronidazole or Metroplex. Uh, this stuff will treat most other things. If you're looking to treat ick and some parasites like that, just look up what temperature they can't stand. Between salt, temperature, a good diet, and them not being stressed in the first place, you won't need to go full nuclear. This is full nuclear here, folks. This is Levamisol. You used to have to buy it online or from a sketchy veterinarian, and you'd have a ball of powder in a little bag and no idea how to dose. Well, now it's easy to dose. I got this from Aquarium Co-op, just to shout out them. But this is Levamisol. This will kill parasites and worms, clear out even the toughest of stuff, usually. Use as directed. Super great stuff. Other than that, stick to the, bot the botanicals. Stick to learning about how to balance your tank and your ecosystem and where to get good fish in the first place and how to keep them happy with their diet. That will save you a world of trouble later on. Thanks, guys. What medication do you keep on hand? Well, for me, I don't keep too many because what I do is I make sure I get my fish from a reputable source. But now if I end up getting fish from Petco and stuff, I'm going to pick up meds while I'm there. But what I normally keep on hand, because it happens to the best of us, is Ick X. And also what I like to keep on hand is General Cure. 
Uh, General Cure is a tablet. It's not like a liquid form, so it has a shelf life that's longer. So that's what I like to keep on hand, just in case there's something that I find right away, I can start treating it right away. And then I, if I think I need some different medication, I will just go, I will make a special trip to go get it. I just have a problem with certain meds that, you know, like uh, I think that you don't want to keep them long because of the shelf life because there could be like oh man I got this I go and getting ready to dump it in and the expiration date's bad and we'll say it was four years ago so that's the, the two I keep on hand uh, thank you all for taking your time to watch this see you in the next question all right goodbye so as far as medications that I keep on hand go I keep the basic stuff so I'll keep Pemafix and Melafix I keep those two on hand just because you know when you go to the doctor they, they start you out on a slightly weaker medicine than like a here's a 1200 milligram pill right off the bat they like to start you on something weaker because the more you medicate the less effective medicine becomes at least that's how it is in humans I'm assuming it's the same way in animals so I keep Pemafix and Melafix on hand for basic bacterial or fungal infections. I know most people have not had success with either of those, but I've always been lucky that using them, I've been able to treat bacterial and fungal infections on an extremely sick corridor. I'll see if I can find a picture of it and put it up for you. So those two I keep on hand. Um, I also keep, you know, general cure on hand in case I need it. I will also keep Maricin and Paracleanse on hand in case the Pemafix and Nelifix don't do good, so that's another antibacterial and antifungal. And I also always keep some kind of ick med. I either keep ickx or APIs ick medicine, just because you never know when ick might creep into your tank, so it's always good to have that one on hand. Other than that, I mean, I have aquarium salt. I don't use it too often. I use it on like fin nippers and stuff that just need a little, little something to help them, but other than that, I don't keep any crazy strong meds on hand other than the bare basics. So for me, I really believe in salt and heat, and I think other people uh, feel that way too because so many other people say that they treat with salt and heat. But I know, especially regarding my cord cats, I know as far as I know, you can't really use salt in those tanks. And with certain illnesses, you don't really want to raise the temperature, sometimes you have to drop the temperature. So in some cases where you can't use salt and heat, I like to use some medications that I have here with me. Um, one of this, one of these is Fritz Fix Ick. Fritz Fix Ick is a really good ick medication if, like I said, if salt and heat doesn't work. And then I have Aqualife Nitrofurazone. And I also have Fritz Maricin 2. Now a lot of people say really good things about Maricin and Maricin 2. So I would strongly suggest that if, um, I'm not sure what Maricin does, but Maricin 2 does bacterial infections. So that's a plus. So these are three of the main medications that I resort to if salt and heat doesn't work. So that those are my fish medications slash remedies. Hi, I'm Carrie with Science Gal Aquatics and today I wanted to help answer the question, what fish medications or other remedies do you have on hand? And in years past, I would go to the fish store without fail and I would buy everything they had whether I needed it or knew how to use it or not. I would just buy it all because I thought I needed it. But in the end, the last couple of issues I've had in the fish room were mainly ick related, but I have found that catapa leaves, aquarium salt, a heater, and a little bit of stress coat for me goes a long way. So that's a definite remedy that I will always have on hand. My go-to medications would be salt, first and then I also keep on hand um, ick medications and I, and I also got another medication um, it's by um, Fritz it's for uh, um, 
fungal infections. And uh, now those three medications are my go-to in my fish room. Um, they seem to really help me out a lot when I do have issues, which is not a lot, but I've have had them in a, I've had them in the past, and I highly recommend everyone to keep meds on hand just for just in case, you know. Hey guys, it's Jess with Main Sales Fur and Fins and the Aquatic Morning Show. The meds that I keep on hand, the most important is aquarium salt. You can use aquarium salt for so many different things, but the aquarium salt is always a keeper, always a keeper. I tend to be pretty impatient, and when I see a sick fish or I see a tank that is sick, I want to get it nipped in the butt really fast. So say your tank has come down with ick. I had a goldfish that I had brought in from outside for the winter. They've been in this tank for months. Everybody's been doing fine, and all of a sudden, I have a goldfish with it covered in ick. Only one, but it was covered in ick. Where did it come from? Don't know, don't care. All I know is my go-to for ick is ick X. Yes, you can dose with salt and raise the temperature. Um, there are a few different ways to deal with ick, but my go-to for ick is ick X. Um, for funguses or like fin rot, I will go for Pemafix or like Melathane Blue I use for my eggs when I um, pull my eggs to um, incubate them or whatever. Um, I use the Melathane Blue so they don't fungus over. Now one that I do have, I don't use very often, but is the Malachite Green and I have I have used it, just not for very often, but it too says it controls um, fish diseases, funguses, external parasites, and protozoans. So I do have this on hand as well. I also have Fungus Clear. Um, probably had this because I couldn't get a hold of anything else at the time. Um, did it do the job? I don't think that it did. I think I ended up getting what I wanted anyway. But I do have this on hand as well. Worms. My go-to for worms, no matter what worm it is, is going to be dog dewormer for fish. Yes. The main ingredient in this is fenbendazole. And I know Safeguard has it and Panicure C, I believe, has it as well. But you want to look for it. the main ingredient as fenbendazole. And there's uh, many videos on how to dose the fenbendazole. Um, you want to get the one that has the one gram packs. It's the easiest. This was all they had, and this is the four gram packs. Um, but it was just, just got to break it down even further. Um, but you would do like one gram to 100 gallons and then break it down from there. So um, my go-to for any kind of worms is going to be fenbendazole. It also takes care of um, planaria in your tanks, in your fish tank or shrimp tanks or whatever. It doesn't hurt um, shrimp. Um, it may hurt your snails. I would not leave it in a tank or put it in a tank with mystery snails or any snails that you really want, but um, it will not hurt your shrimp. So, um, Fendenbendazole is my go-to for any kind of worms. I also will use the medicated flake, the Fendenbendazole medicated flake by Everything Aquatic. I use them both together because this will get them from the outside, this gets them from inside. Um, so I do use them in, in sequence together. But now, if you've gone through all of that and nothing else seems to be working, I do not recommend this, but this is what I use. I will use Copper Safe. Be careful using Copper Safe. This copper will stay in your tanks for a long time, meaning it will kill shrimp. And I believe it will kill um, snails as well. So 
if you were to use this in your tank and then you, for some reason, don't have the same fish in there three months later and you throw some shrimp and snails in there, they're not going to make it because the copper will stay in the tank um, residually for a while. Um, so remember, if you're going to keep meds on hand, aquarium salt, keep it on hand. If you didn't have anything else, keep the aquarium salt on hand. Um, I do keep a lot on hand. But um, I don't want to have something come up and then have to make a mad dash to the store because I don't have it. And I definitely want to get on top of something if I see it. So I hope this has helped you. Jazz with Mainstail Spur and Fins. Thank you. I'm a little biased. I'll be honest. I had a sponsorship for the longest time with API. And well, to be frank, the reason why was because I love their products. And so I always had their stuff anyways. But then API sent me more stuff. I mean, I've got this good old API erythromycin here, the EM erythromycin, which is great for if you have a, a bacterial infection like uh, blue-green algae, also known as cyanobacteria. It's not an algae, it's a bacteria. So if, you're, if you don't mind treating your tanks with, with medications, that is definitely the way to go. I also use... Uh, several other API products for things like fin rot and funguses. Um, some people swear by them, others don't. I, on the other hand, have rescued my rot keel severum when it had fin rot by treating it with some, uh, some API products that I had gotten. They got water test kits, you know, the master test kit that everybody knows about. They've also got water treatments for your, your tap water. They got pH up and pH down and everything in between. So um, I don't want this to be an API commercial, but I did want to say, you know, I absolutely love ATA, API products. So I hope you guys found this of use. And please, if you haven't already, Go ahead and hit his, the subscribe button over there at Stephen P. 2003 and you're going to love him. He's an awesome guy and he does great music. Anyways, this is Chris signing off. I hope you have a wonderful day. And just remember, we're feeding the addiction one tank at a time. Bye now.